Sri Guru Bhyan Maha. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Karthik Fine Arts, I am delighted to welcome you all for this Music in Depth series program. On behalf of Karthik Fine Arts and all your behalf, I have immense pleasure in welcoming Dr. Sridhar Jagannathan, who has consented to give a talk on a new method of understanding Carnatic Malakatta Ragas. And thank him for the same. Dr. Sridhar Jagannathan. It will be an offbeat and interactive program. Vidwan Sri Muttaswami will accompany him on harmonium. I would like to introduce Dr. Sridhar Jagannathan now. Sridhar Jagannathan was born in Chennai in 1957 and did his engineering at IIT Karakpur and his doctorate in ocean engineering from University of California, Berkeley. He learns Carnatic music from his flute teacher, Sri Chittur Patanchali in Chennai. Earlier, he learned Carnatic vocal music from Simati Anuradha Mahesh in Ernakulam. Sridhar likes to explore aspects of Indian culture and heritage with the intent of understanding and learning from the past. His focus on Sanskrit meters led to poetic translation of Kalidasa's Megadutam and the Bhagavad Gita. Another book focused on the application of pranayama through simple shlokas. In this lecture, Dr. Sridhar will explore the architecture of the Malakarta system and provide a simple new framework for easy understanding and usage of Malakarta Ragas. Sri Sridhar is currently the co-founder co of OGO Incorporated, a technology startup that has created a patented approach to defining an IP address for spatial objects. Applications for OGO addressing technology are seen in logistics, supply chain tracking, and land use characterization. It is our fortune that he is giving the talk today, despite being a very busy professional. I now request our president, Sri S.N. Srikanth, to address the gathering, please. We would be happy if the people at the back can come forward. It's a small intimate gathering, and very interested people are. No compulsion, only a request, but do come. Sridhar Jagannathan, Mr. Muthuswami, who will be supporting him on the harmonium. Our dynamic secretaries, Sri Rajagopal and Sri Shekhar, and my dear friends. On behalf of Karthik Fine Arts, let me extend a very, very hearty welcome to you. You have come all the way for what appears to be a specialized topic, but with the genius of Sridhar, you would learn how it can be made very simple. Karthik Fine Arts is now 48 years old. We are approaching our golden jubilee with pride and with a renewed sense of purpose. As you all know, we are dedicated to promoting Indian classical music, dance, and what we call here as drama or theater. But we have also embarked on a number of new initiatives. And these include outreach programs to encourage music and dance talent in areas of the city distant from the usual Mayrapur, Tinagar core. There's an enormous amount of talent which is there uh, in uh, whether it is Krompet or whether it is we are just trying to get something done in Sholinganalur 
and other places north madras so we are we have started a new initiative to tap the talent to encourage the talent and to give them exposure in these other areas with the help of organizations in those areas we are also trying to encourage music and dance talent in colleges and schools and i'm very happy to see students from psbb here so our thanks to mrs sheila rajendra for taking the interest to send you she herself is at another function today and most importantly another new initiative that we have launched is called our music in depth and dance in depth series it's not entirely new so i would not like to say that but we do think we should have more programs for specialized learners advanced learners and also where people who have interest in the interface of music and science now they say that music is more science than art some say it is the code of the universe maybe that is why a surprising number of scientists are also good musicians you might have heard that einstein albert einstein was a very good violinist in our own city professor kamakoti our director of our iit madras is also a good violinist and we have recently been in touch with the former director of isro dr radhakrishnan who is an excellent singer and he will be performing for us perhaps in january or february we are going to have another series where people who have distinguished themselves in other professions and also in music are going to perform for you already know two names don't leak it out until we publish it in the papers now <clears throat> the uh, carnatic music also as you are all aware makes extensive use of mathematics in calculations counts <coughs> patterns etc i will not go in depth into it and try to pretend that i know anything even one tenth of what sridhar knows uh, but the fact is that carnatic music has an extensive base in science but yet a lot of this treasure trove of information is being steadily lost over the years for various reasons but there are some some very committed souls who are rediscovering these links and making them available to people like us and dr sridhar is one such pioneer you may wondering you may be wondering where why at one point in time i slipped into saying just sridhar from dr sridhar that's because he's a schoolmate of mine last year i had gone to san francisco and he took the trouble to travel one and a half hours just to say hello to me and that was a meeting after 50 years but you know the bonds which are forged in your early years are very strong and they were renewed very quickly and i was totally amazed at what all he is doing he is a naval architect and he followed it up with uh, uh, a phd in ocean engineering if i am not mistaken now what on earth was he doing with melakarta ragas i was puzzled and matrix donation and then he said no no that's i have also written a book here the bhagavad gita an english translation in the same meter as the original well that's amazing and here's another book i have written on the art of breathing and he's connecting it to the other two i was floored i didn't know how he found time amongst all his activities to do this work also he is also a tech pioneer as mr rajagopalan said he has been in several top organizations i will not repeat the the names and he is a he he is also has his own startup and i was amazed that he could find the time to do all this and it was our good fortune that he is visiting chennai now and uh, i requested him to come and present the contents of his book on melagartha ragas and the understanding them through a matrix notation 
and he was kind enough to agree. I am also extremely happy that Mr. Muthusamy will be giving him support. I have not met him before, but I am informed that he is a very, very experienced uh, harmon uh, harmonium player. So we look forward to an excellent evening, which will be fulfilling not only to the soul, but also to the intellect. Thank you. Greetings, friends. How are you all doing? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I was very concerned that it would be four of us, Shrikant, Dr. Mr. Rajivabal, and Ms. Muthusamy and myself. So I'm so heartened that you're here. Okay? This is very informal. So I do not want you to think of this as, uh, you know, uh, formalized setting, uh, you know, be very patient, etc. Please don't. Think of us as a family gathering. Okay. I would encourage all of you to come forward. The reason is I'm going to present material. I, I think it would be very challenging to see this from the back. Okay. And we're going to discuss this. So please, as far as possible, come to the front. Otherwise, you will find it relatively difficult to understand what I'm trying to illustrate. As I illustrate it, I'm going to have Mr. Uh, Sri Muthuswamy uh, demonstrate it on um, the harmonium. Now, we are going to go through a progression and this progression requires that you participate. Okay? I believe learning comes from both challenging what someone else says and challenging yourself in terms of what you believe and understand so that one can then advance to the next state. So, I would urge you to interrupt me at any point and say, I do not understand or I have difficulty following the progression of your thoughts. Okay? I am a learner of Carnatic music. I, by no means do I uh, qualify myself as a professional. Uh, there are, this is the citadel of Carnatic music. There are so many Vidwans here. Chances are, um, as you walk down East Mada Street, you'll find people of illustrious uh, capabilities in Carnatic music. So, but having gone through this journey of learning Carnatic music, I came across certain things that as a technologist and a scientist, I had to map it in my own way so that I could understand it better. And that's what I bring to you. Carnatic Melakatta Ragas structure and a new way to look at it. And what I'm trying to, going to do is to have you see that once you look at it with a slightly different lens, things uh, look very different. This is like taking, let's say you have white light and you suddenly take a prism and suddenly you see a variety of colors, right? In the same way, I want to illustrate this pattern of Carnatic Melakarta Ragas have a beauty and certain kinds of relationships that once you see them, they look very brilliant, very different, and therefore you have a more nuanced appreciation of what they are, okay? Now, before we jump into that, I want to give you a sense for how I see increasingly, I'm 66 years old now, and for the last 10 plus years, I've started to get the feeling that I've lived a life which is outwardly focused, focused on largely, I would say, Western systems, that there is a perception that you learn from the West and therefore you become more successful in life. But over the last 10, 15 years, I've actually become just the opposite. I think ancient civilizations, in contrast to uh, Western civilizations, which have a lot of knowledge, ancient civilizations have a lot of wisdom. And if we rush too fast in towards the West, we risk losing the wisdom that is there in depth in our culture, in the Chinese culture, in the Islamic culture, and so on. There is so much. I have started 
appreciating the beauty of Chinese culture, for instance, when I had severe back problems. How do you cure back pain? The Chinese are wonderful at it. They've been practicing for a few thousand years. They know what they're talking about, right? And so do the Indians. And so even the practice of namas, for instance, is a beautiful cure for back pain. So there are, there's wisdom in these cultures that we need to appreciate. I go to the doctor and he says, I can do back surgery. But he says there's a small risk you'll never walk again, <laughs> right? And that risk is not small. <laughs> the Chinese culture is not saying, traditional Chinese medicine is not saying you will not walk again. It says you will walk better. So there is so much wisdom. The issue with wisdom, the, with the wisdom business is, you cannot r just read about it, right? You have to realize it. It's, this is said in so many different ways in our Upanishads, in the Bhagavad Gita, and so on. It's like Kamadenu standing in front of your house. It's, it's full of milk. But unless you milk the cow, it's not going to yield you know, what it is capable of. So like that, you have to extract wisdom, right? Feel free to challenge me, okay? This is an open session. Think of, us, uh, think of us as a family discussing things. So you can say, no, 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 I disagree, and give your point of view, which would be as important or more important than what I say. Now, for the last few years, I've also been focused on looking at the wisdom of the Indian knowledge systems. How did I get into this? I, was, I live in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and one day I was in the library, uh, which I go to almost every day, and I saw this book, Meghadutam by Kalidasa, and I picked it up. And it was written uh, both in Sanskrit and in English. And to my shame, I could not understand the Sanskrit. I could read the English, I could not read the Sanskrit. It is truly embarrassing not to have any knowledge of one's own tradition, right? So that day I said I'm going to learn, start learning Sanskrit. Now, that's, it's late in my, uh, in my uh, lifetime. Uh, it's not easy uh, uh, to learn Sanskrit. Uh, Mr. M uh, Sri Muthuswami is, a, I understand, I'm a MA in Sanskrit, so he could, uh, uh, obviously he can teach us a lot. But I started in my own way, and I made a promise to myself, I will understand Meghadutam in Sanskrit. And I learned enough to be able to do that. But then something else happened to me. I started appreciating Megadu, the meter written that Meghadutam is written in. They say Kalidasa is known for this meter. Na na na, na 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 I read it and I said, what a loss that we cannot appreciate what Kalidasa wrote because we don't know Sanskrit anymore, right? The vast majority of us. So then I was curious, suppose Kalidasa were to write this same Megadutam in English, how would he write it, right? Suppose that was the challenge. So. I started playing with writing Sanskrit meters in English so that they would sound the same. So I've rewritten Meghadutam. Uh, I took Meghadutam, understood Sanskrit meters, and then rewrote it as a book as Meghadutam in English uh, with the same Sanskrit meter. Okay? So one should be able to say it the same way and it'll sound the same way. Oh. That's what I was. Huh? So that's why I'm saying you need to turn off the lights. What should I do? First is turn the light off, second is read it. Okay, turn the lights off and let me read it. Okay, let's. Oh, me and the slides. Okay, then I need a handheld mic. Yeah. 
Okay, I'll take that point. Can you hear me? Hello, hello, okay. All right, so Meghdutum of Kalidasa, Sanskrit meters, in this particular case it was uh, Mandakranta, which is like the movement of a snake. It's a very slithery thing, or you can say movement of a, movement of a cloud. It kind of stays there and then slithers away to some other new position. So the meter is also written like that. And I was curious whether you can translate it into English and produced a book called uh, you know, Meghdutam uh, with English meter. Now, uh, anyhow, that got me interested in Sanskrit meters in general. So then I was curious, what does it take to uh, produce uh, other works which are also difficult to understand. So I produced a work which is Samshepa Ramayana, which is 120 verses of something in English, uh, and also the Bajagovindam. And then most recently, as uh, Srikanth kindly mentioned, okay, <coughs> maybe I have to keep touching it or something. Uh, I produced a work on Bhagavad Gita in English. And suddenly I had uh, an inspiring moment. I started realizing that the vast majority of uh, Sanskrit works, Ramayana, Mahabharata, uh, Lord of the Puranas, etc., are all written in one meter, Anustup Chanda. Right? And I was wondering why that's the case. In uh, Sanskrit, as well over 600 meters, when some people say 3,000 meters in Sanskrit. Of those, why one? Please go ahead. What do you mean by meter? Ah, meter is a standard rhythmic way of uh, um, uh, poetry. So you m might have heard of iambic uh, pentameter, for instance, right? So uh, uh, what's a good example? Same so as, as it's not same as a beat. It's a structure of uh, a particular verse, right? And therefore, in Sanskrit po poetry what happens is there are uh, long aksharas and short aksharas. Ka, ka. For instance, ka is called lagu and ka is guru, right? So with this combination, a particular meter says, these are the rules for this meter. And that's how it has to be pronounced. So for instance, uh, and I will, uh, I might go into this some more, but take a standard sloka. Vakratunda Mahakaya, Surya Koti Samaprabha, Nirvignam, Kurme Deva Sarva Karyeshu Sarvasha Sarvada. So now you can see there's a standard way of saying Vakratunda Mahakaya. So this is Anustup Chandha. Anustup Chandha is a 16 beat meter repeated twice. That's how we get most of our shlokas. Right? So Dharma Chetre Kuru Chetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha. You can see it sounds the same as Vakratunda Mahakaya. Why is that? These are all Anustup Chandaha. Anustup Chandaha is a set of 16 aksharas, right, with a combination of Lagu and Guru. When combined in a particular way, they give these uh, particular metrical styles. It's actually a family of meters. From that is derived something called the Shloka meter. The Shloka meter is what we are very familiar with, all of us, you know. Uh, we would have heard it in, in a temple, we would have heard it in other places. So, when I say Dharma Chetre, Kuru Chetre, I'm actually following a pattern. Uh, it goes like this. Out of the first eight syllables, they say you can have the first four syllables can be either Lagu or Guru, but the last four, there are rules. So the, it goes like this. Da, 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 da. No. Uh, let, me, let, let me say one, two, three, four for uh, non-specific syllables and Da and Dum for specific syllables. Da meaning light and Dum being uh, Guru heavy. One, two, three, four, da, dum, dum, da. One, two, three, four, da, dum, da, dum. Right? Uh, so, for instance, dharma chetre, kuru chetre, samaveda, yuyutsavaha, mamaka, pandavaschaiva, kim kuruvata, osanjaya. So, the last four syllables of each line have specific rules. So, that particular meter is called anustup chanda, right? Or shloka meter. So anyhow, with that, I rewrote Bhagavad Gita uh, in that particular meter, which is the original way, the way the, it's written in Sanskrit. 
that got me interested in meters in general, then I realized that, man, pranayama, uh, that we uh, sometimes say, has got the same structure. So then I hypothesized that there is a way to breathe that we don't understand. I came up with the notion that we don't know how to breathe. And people said, well, that doesn't make any sense. You know, we all know how to breathe. So then I give the analogy of, uh, suppose you buy a car and you've been driving the car and someone else asks after 10 years, how do you like the car, you know? Uh, it, and you say, it drives well. And he says, how's the fourth gear? And he says, what? There's a fourth gear? I'm only driving on first and second. So like that, most of us don't know how to breathe. The reason is we breathe very shallow. We breathe with almost uh, one third of our lungs. And we breathe about 25,000 times. So this particular one, the art of breathing, showcases how you can breathe bet better using simple shlokas. And I believe underlying the architecture of these things, that the sages are, are uh, ancestors who have written uh, many of these things have buried gems of wisdom in our traditions and it behooves us to learn it for ourselves so that we can appreciate the beauty of our culture not as a matter of pride but as a matter of practical living so anyhow i don't want to overemphasize those things because our work is different so anyhow i started focusing on uh, as i started learning music i started uh, looking at melakartas because everyone says start with maya malagavala it's the 15th melakarta and then someone say okay we are doing karagara priya that is number 22 and i was okay fine but what does 15 and 22 have to do with anything and no one that i <laughs> uh, was familiar with ever thought to explain why what is 15 and what is 22 and are they related and does it matter so that got me curious, and that's how I started this work. I hope I answered your question on uh, Sanskrit meters. OK, OK, good. All right. This is once again, you know, I toss these things. And uh, you might say that this fellow never comes to the point. He's talking about a lot of other things. He's not come to Melakartas. But I thought I would bring this slide to emphasize the amazing wisdom of the Indian tradition. To me, this triangle represents all that you need in life. I'm saying, I'm saying this without uh, you know, uh, exaggeration. This set, this triangle of the eight limbs of yoga are a complete prescription of life. You see at the bottom, yama, which is your values, value system. Niyama, your habits. Asana, how do you carry your body? so that you are not in pain. Pranayama, how do you breathe? Now, and we have simplified, because we follow the Western tradition, of thinking of pranayama as oxygenation, that we are taking in oxygen and letting out carbon dioxide. In both Indian and in Chinese tradition, it is the essence of life. Every second you are breathing in the essence of life and you are letting it go through your body. So you say pranayaswa, panayaswa, vyanayaswa, etc. This is actually the circulation of the essence of life through your body. And if we don't focus on it, when we say it randomly, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Right? So I believe that pranayama has got deep, deep significance. In, uh, when I had my back injury, one of the books I looked at was a Tai Chi uh, book called The Healer Within. And he says exactly what uh, uh, yoga says for pranayama. He says you have to breathe into the area where you have pain. And that's what cures your body. It is so deeply philosophical and spiritual as well as practical. So pranayama is so essential to the way we look at life. But above that, oh my gosh, this is pratyahara. And I, do, I say foundation advanced or something like that. Pratyahara, you could put all of Bhagavad Gita, all of the Upanishads, into that layer because that is what separates atma from the body all right and then you're off into to the races dharana and dhyana is this is how uh, where today we say let's learn mindfulness let's look at this youtube video from some fellow somewhere uh, in in uh, harvard on mindfulness our sages have been looking at this for 2000 plus years i can assure you that the depth of Indian civilization on understanding life in a more comprehensive way is just quite amazing. 
and then of course realization. And you can read this not as a spiritual thing. There is no you know, God here or anything. It is about practical aspects of life. And you know, I offer this purely as uh, a potential prescription for life. What arrows? Oh, this thing? Oh, no significance. <laughs> we are not going down or up. But this line is actually significant. It is actually very difficult for most of us to actually cross this line. We say we go to yoga classes and we are kind of stuck here and we think of asana as, okay, I'm going to stretch this way and stretch that way, etc. And pranayama, we think, okay, if I do... Uh, we, I sent it, sit in front of some YouTube video and do Bhastrika 10 times, that's pranayama. We breathe, as I said, 25,000 times. We have to have a better way of training our body. And as I write in that book on the art of breathing, what I found was if you breathe systematically, you can train the muscle memory of your own body so that autonomously it'll behave better, it'll breathe deeper. I feel... I practiced this before I wrote the book. I feel I uh, am slower in breathing and I breathe uh, more uh, longer and that has made me feel a lot more rested and uh, you know, calmer. So pranayama I think has got a huge significance in how we can live. Now people say the swaras are connected to chakras, maybe, I don't know, uh, you know I've, I've tried it, I cannot say I've reached any significant uh, you know, development, but for, I offer it as purely as a, uh, you know, uh, something that has been contemplated. Anyhow, I'm going to pose this question, and I expect uh, that you will be able to answer this question at the end of this. Uh, okay, so a lot of dynamics here. At the end of this program, that you'll be able to answer this yourselves. The question is as follows. Shri Bharat Sundar. He asked a contestant in Carnatic uh, uh, Idol, Music Idol, Junior, last year. Take Maya Malagola. I don't know why this is so jittery. I don't know whether your pointer has got some effect on this. Pointer is uh, independent. But I, this the projector is, seems to be jittery. <laughs> okay, we'll continue. So he said, uh, he to ask the con contestant, start with Maya Mola Gaula. And, uh, you know, it has got a particular uh, swara combination that um, Sri Muthuswami is going to play. But then, on the uh, Avrohanam, you s every swara should be the other variety. So if it is low ri, it should be high ri. It's high ga, it should be low ga, etc. And you play that raga, uh, that you sing that gava, uh, raga uh, on the way back. Right? The question in my mind is, oh, this will be a nice question to ask the audience that is attending today. The important thing is not the answer. The important thing is the method. So I want you to come on a journey with me on how we are going to discover the answer to this question. You start with Maya Malagaula, what raga evolves as you switch the swaras completely, all the uh, variable swaras, except sa and pa, right? Okay. The 12 swarasthanas are uh, well known to all of you. Sangha and Pa are achala swaras, right? They don't change. But you have Lori. Okay. I think the jack is loose. That's why it should. Ah, okay. That's a good hypothesis. Uh, uh, <coughs> Yeah, that's right. 
think is good. So you have uh, low ri, sa, low ri, high ri. Then you got low ga, high ga, low ma, high ma, low da, uh, high da, low ni, high ni. And then uh, upper sa. Right? These are our swarasthanas. I'm going to have uh, Sri Muthuswami play this shortly. <coughs> but before that, we do that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Um, so this 72 Sampurna Ragas come from the combination of this. So as I said, Ri and Ga com combine as follows. And if you understand this, you will understand the entirety of this uh, lecture today. Okay. So I want you to pay close attention to what I'm saying just now. There are six ways in which you can form Ri and Ga. Those are low Ri, high Ri, low Ri, low Ga, Low ri, high ga, high ri, low ga, high ri, high ga, low ga, high ga. How many are there? I didn't hear anything. Six. 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 Repeat with me, okay? I want you to just say it as I say it, immediately after I say it. Low ri, high ri. Low ri, low ga. Low ri, high ga. High ri low ga. Low high ri high ga. Low ga high ga. Got it? Ri and ga can change in six ways. And the first one is low ri high ri. We often call this 1G1, just notationally. Okay, so there is sometimes it's confusing how many gas are there. People say there are three gas and three knees. The reality is there are only two re positions, two ga positions, two ma positions, two da positions, two knee positions. Okay, so just this produces six combinations. Okay, da and knee do the same thing. So I, since you guys are already good at this, you go, I want you to follow me as I say it. It's exactly the same thing. Lo da, high da. So I didn't hear it properly. Low da low ni. Low da high ni. High da low ni. High da high ni. Low ni high ni. How many are there? So if there are six of this and six of this, how many will there be? No. Thirty-six. Right? So you have to choose one of this. Suppose I choose low re, uh, high re, right? I can now form six of this, right? And there are six of these. So six times six is 36. That is for one madhyamam. Let's say uh, Suddha madhyamam. But we have two madhyamams. Ma can change in two ways. So therefore, there is 36 for ma one and 36 for ma two. 72 melakartas. That's how we have our system. This is one of the most unique and substantive systems in the world, okay? The, as I'll show, uh, maybe I'll show this or, or just talk about it. The Hindustani uh, scholar, Bhaktanande, in about, about 100 some years back, he looked at our system and I said, that is beautiful, let me just take 10 of those. And those are the thoughts, Hindustani thoughts. So they have 10 thoughts from our 72 Melakartas, okay? So now that you know this, Excuse me? So, no, these are, uh, see, you're talking about frequency, right? Frequency is immaterial, right? It doesn't matter what frequency it is. So, we can have a swara, uh, raga, which goes on into from, uh, you know, one stai to the other stai. What we are talking about, the ma positions, right? So, uh, excuse me? Yeah. Previous slide. Hi, low. Um, can you just tell sir to sing and show? We are going to do all that. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So now, uh, in the in Indian thought, it was this question was asked as this system came into vogue. Suppose we know the name of a Mela Karta Raga. Is it possible to find the swaras of that Raga? Think of the thinking that has occurred in here. They are thinking, someone will be saying, okay, I'm going to sing Kalyani. Would the audience know what the swaras are for Kalyani? 
So something like 300 plus years back, they found an algorithm, just mind-bogglingly smart. Okay, this is the Katapaya, the uh, Sankhya system. I'm going to talk about very briefly. This is the one which has unfortunately fallen out of vogue. But we all say 15th Melakarta, 29th Melakarta, without actually progressing to, okay, what does it mean? So I'm going to very sh simply show what they originally intended. But the focus of this lecture is to give you an alternate algorithm which is more easily accessible to you. So what they did was, Sanskrit was the language in vogue. They wrote Sanskrit in this particular way as a matrix. And it's called Katapaya the system. Right? So now, written like this, this is an alphanumeric system. So you can say Kata Paya are associated with the number one. Kata Para is associated with two and so on. Then they said, okay, what if we name the Raga such that the first two Aksharas actually have an alphanumeric number and that is the number of the Melakarta. So the way this works is, you take, let's say, uh, Maya. So Ma, looks like, let's look at where Maya is. Ma is number five, right? Ya is number one, so it's 51. Now 51, this is written in what is called uh, left to right system, Sankhya Vamato Gatihi. So in that system, you have to reverse it. So it was most important digit first, less important digit uh, afterwards. So, in 51 is reversed as 15. It's the 15th Melakarta, Maya Malagaula, right? Now with that, they went into a chakra system. So knowing 15 does not sufficiently tell you anything. But knowing the chakra patterns now tells you 15 falls in the third chakra and is the third raga of the chakra and there you go is Maya Malagaula, right? Now in those days, they understood chakras. And this happens to be in the Agni Chakra. So they would say, oh yeah, 15. 15 is in the Agni Chakra. Agni Chakra, third one. Oh, actually it is this re, this ga. And it is that da and that ni. Oh, I see what Maya Maulagaula is. Right? That is the original system. I'm telling you, uh, I can, from my experience, I've not had a single person who can say, oh yeah, I can figure out what the swaras are. They can say 15. They can say, you know, Maya Maulagaula. But rarely have they gone beyond that to say, I can give you the swaras. It has just fallen out of vogue. But look at the brilliance of this algorithm, a few hundred years back. But now, we're going to have some music. So, I'm going to have Sri Muthuswami just do all the 12 swaras on the harmonium. Please, sir. Yeah, just play Sa, Re1, Re2, Re two, yeah. Ga ga one. Ga two. Ma. Ma two. Pa. Da one. Da two. N two. N three. So this is the full set of swaras in our system. From this we derive all seventy two. So now let's start with Shankarabaranam. It's the C major uh, scale for in the Western music. So let's play Raga Shankara Paranam, uh, Aroanam and Aroanam. Green. You can play the reverse. So these are Sampurna Ragas, so they are the same, they have seven notes, there are no Vakram in it, no twisting, and they are the same going up and coming down, right? So this is the 29th Melakarta, Sa, Hairi, Haiga, uh, Sudamadhyam, Lower Ma, Pa, Haida, Haini, okay? Let's just continue with a couple more, sir. We'll do uh, Todi. Sa. Ah. Now we'll do Maya Malagola. Okay. 
So you can see patterns, right? This re is sitting close to sa, right? And then you see this ga is lower to this re versus this ga and so on. So you can start seeing patterns uh, of how these scales are formed. Similarly, let's play Karagara Priya and uh, Hari Kamboji. That's a famous uh, Chakkani Raja uh, composition comes from there. Let me poll the audience. Is this interesting? Very, very much. Okay, good. Okay. Now let's see how we can get to the same answer, the original algorithm, with a different way of playing with things, which we are more familiar with in modern times. So I'm going to take the number space 1 to 72. So there's, there's a number 72 here. So 1 go, uh, goes up to 36. These are uh, uh, Sudha Madhyama Melakartas. 37 to 72 are uh, Prati Madhyama Melakartas, right? Let me first take that line and drop it next to the first one. So now I've got 1 to 36, and then 1 to 36 again, except these, these were actually 37 to 72, right? So I'm just showing you that there's an 8 and an 8 in M1 and M2. There's a 15 and a 15 in M1 and uh, M2, right? So I'm just forming patterns. And then I say, OK, fine. But what if I structure it like this? So imagine there is a street. And the street has got 72 houses, right? One, two, three, four. They are numbered. So if you wanted to go to house number eight, you would say eight, and you would go to that house, right? Let us say a developer comes, and he says, no, no, no. I'm going to restructure this thing, right? I'm going to build it such that you have tower one, tower two, tower three, etc. Each tower has got six apartments, right? And you can retain the same numbers. So now if you want to go to eight, so you come and ask the watchman, and he says, sir, that is tower two. Second unit on tower two is eight. Someone else comes and says, how about 15? I, the street was there. I know how to find 15. Now you got some buildings. You see, the watchman says, no, 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 you go to the third tower, sir. 15 is the third unit in tower 3. All clear? Exactly the same thing. Same fellows are living here. All good? Yeah? Yes. I need feedback. Otherwise, I'll go to sleep. Okay. Now, as this became common, this is, by the way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they said, why do we have all these complicated 8, 17, 15, etc.? Each tower has got 6, right? Why not, why not I just say tower 1 has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, tower 2 has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. It's the same thing. The same fellow still lives, number 8 fellow is now living in tower 2, second unit. Agreed? Nothing has changed, right? Okay. So, why not just give them, suppose the postal guy says, Okay, I need an address. You cannot say tower this, tower that. I need an address. So they, the apartment building said, okay, tower one will go as 1-1, 1-2, 1-3, 1-4, 1-5, 1-6. Tower two is 2-1, 2-2, 2-3, Now, where is unit eight, fellow? What is his new address? So I come, every time I come to Madras, I see on the street and the uh, house sign, old eight. New 2-2, two, two, right? So that's what we are doing. So this old 8 fellow is sitting in 2-2. Two, two. Where is 15 sitting? By the way, that fellow's name is Maya. I forgot to introduce the tenants. Okay. This fellow's name is Todi, by the way. Right? And what is this fellow's name? Yes. He's got a throat problem. He's Karagara and he'll go. So who is this guy? Shankar lives there, right? Now... We say, okay, why this one, two, three, four? Why not give them labels, proper labels? So who is, what is the name of tower one? 
since you guys are experts at it. What is this first tower? No? Forget chakras. No, ch no chakras. What was that first uh, recombination? Low re, high re. First tower is low re, high re. What is the second tower? Low re? Low re, low ga. What is the third tower? What is the fourth tower? High re, low ga. What is the fifth tower? And what is the sixth tower? Low ga, high ga. Let's do it one more time because this is so super important. You have to say it. All clear? Yeah. You know the tower combinations now? Okay. Now we go one step further. Someone said, what is this? Low re, high re, it sounds good, but what is this one, two uh, tower businesses, right? That doesn't make sense, you know, low re, second unit. So why not put dani combinations here? So on this, we start again. Start. I need more voices. You, everyone has to attempt. And if it's okay, if it's not okay, if it's not right, but just let's do it together. Low da, high da. Low da, low knee. Got it? Now, I'm going to come back to this fellow, this Todi guy. His address is 22, okay? I want you to remember the address, but I want you to say what are the combinations associated with that address. So we have now decided that we are not going to talk about 8 anymore. Okay? We are going to say 8 is equivalent to 22. So in our minds, we are going to say 22. Right? But that 2, the first 2 refers to this guy. So tell me, what is the significance of 22? Right? So 8, which is now 2, 2, has got a combination of Lori Loga and Loda Loni. Right? That is which, and if it is uh, Suddha Madhyamam, what Raga is that? Todi. Of course. Can you just, uh, just play that for us? Play Sa Lori Loga. Clear? Who is not clear about this? Huh? Yeah, he played Sa, Ma and Pa also, right? So you have to stick the Riga and you have to stick the Dani, right? Who is not clear about this? Who says I am not sure about it? Because I want to make sure that everyone is following because this is how we are going to build on things. Everyone is clear? Yes. I can point to any of you and say please explain it. Yeah? Yes? No, that is okay. That's a different issue. I just say swaras. Okay? Don't need to sing. Don't need to, you know, interpret and all that. But is the concept clear? Yeah? Okay. Uh, no, no, go ahead. How about Ma? So this this whole thing is, you can easily use it for any Madhyamam, but think of one Madhyamam and add these six Swaras. That makes it seven. Yeah? Got it? Okay. All right. With this construct, we can evolve the complete system of 72 Melakartas, right? If you guys have grasped what we just discussed, now you should be able to say, not a problem. You give me any combination, I'll tell you what the swaras are. We are going to work on it, okay? It's not intuitive, but it is not difficult. I just, 
you just need to focus on it at the end of today's talk you will leave with a clear understanding that any of the 72 melakartas you can tell all the swaras okay you just have to focus it's within you it's not within me okay so let's talk about uh let's take take senavati okay this is uh, i'm showing uh, this this side of the chart is uh, suddha madhyam this is prati madhyam senavati has got this 2 1 combination it is m m1 2 1 okay that means suddha madhyam with a riga combination of 2 and a dani combination of 1 can someone interpret what that means M one two one. Yes. Suddenly there is silence. Glory, huh? Loga. No, no. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Correct. Right. Right. Clear. Okay. Let's do something else. Uh, let's do. Let's take. Uh, um, I don't know how to do that frankly. Okay. Uh it's projected so uh, So uh, by the way all these slides will be made available to you. I will give you the uh, email ID and you can write to me and I will uh, send it to you, okay? So uh, not a problem sending you the material, but I understand how difficult it is. That's why I said please all come forward. I know it's difficult to read. You can still do that, okay? So let's take uh, Chakravakam. Chakravakam is M134 Okay. Now I did not realize Chakravakam was so close to Maya Malagola, but it is incredibly close. It is one swara away. Can someone identify what that swara differential between Maya Malagola and Chakravakam is? So Maya Malagola is what? What was the address of that fellow? Three three. Three three. Very nice. Okay. Someone is paying attention. Chakravakam is three four. What is the difference between three three and three four? what is common and what is different ha huh? three the first three is the same so first three is when you say three it is lori haiga it's the same right for the two but for maya malagaula the dani combination is three whereas chakravakam is four what is the difference between 3 and 4 on the dani combination what is 3 in dani loda haini loda haini what is 4 yes so what is the difference two differences right in dani dani switched right from loda haini it went to haida loni everyone is following that who is not clear on it we got to admit it if it's not clear you got to say that is confusing no we got the concept but it's very practical okay all right all right let's say uh, between maya malagaula by the way sir can you play uh, maya malagaula and chakravakam they might have what did he change da ni he changed so it was lo da hai ni he switched it to hai da lo ni okay let's just try play maya malagola going up chakravakam going down You can just play. Clear? So we can. I I want you to also to hear the difference, not just see the difference. All right. Now let's go to uh, other Melakartas. 
So let's start, take uh, Karagara Priya. This is 4 4. So 4 uh, 4 is what? 4 4 is. Uh, no, no, let's not say 22. Let's say 4 4. What is 4? Okay, let's do it again. We start. 1 is what? Lori, Hairi. No, no, wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2. For Lori, Hairi. Lori, Loga. What? I'm not hearing any resonance. Okay, let's do it again together. Lori, Hairi is 1. Lori, Loga is 2. Lori, Haiga is 3. Hairi, Loga is 4. Hairi, Haiga is 5. Loga, Haiga is 6. So, what is this? Karagara Priya? 4 4, right? So, let's just play it, sir, one time. Karagara Priya, it is Hairi, Loga, Haida, Loni. It. Now, sir, if you can play uh, the one below that, we're going to go uh, Karagar Priya. We're going to go to four three. Before you play it, what is four three? Everyone agreed with that? Yeah. Hairi Loga Loda. Aini. Got it? Kiravani. Sir, please. Kiravani? Mm. Kiravani. Kiravani. Okay. Now, let's play the one below that. What is M142? So, 4 is what again? 4 is? Hairi Loga. What is 2? 2 is Loda. See, you remember Todi. You know it's the standard things, right? So, Todi is what? Lori Loga, Loda Loni. So, when you say get 2, you say Loda Loni, you know. It's in the opposite knee position. So, this thing, uh, Natabhairavi, is Hairi Loga and Loda Loni. Let's play Natabhairavi. Clear? Yeah? Now, let's jump across from Karagarapriya to over. So, we play it. Sir, just play one more time Karagarapriya. Mm. What is the address of this fellow? M144. Because he is in the M1 block. Right? He is in the 44 unit of M1 block. But there is another adjoining block called M2. Right? That fellow's address is a, a, a contentious fellow. A contentious lady called Hema. Right? So, she is in M244. Right? What does M244 mean? Except? Except Pratimadhyamam. So, please play Hemavati. Is, this is Kantimati, right? Shri Kantimati is, yeah, right, but uh, Kriti is Shri Kantimati, right? In India. So, did you hear the M1, M2 difference? Otherwise, uh, Karagara Priya is identical to Hemavati with just a switch from M1 to M2. Right? Clear? Okay. Let's do Harikamboji. Harikamboji is 5 4. Okay? Who can explain what 5 is and what 4 is? 
Beautiful. Ten four. Haida Loni. Perfect. You guys are getting to be better than me. Okay, I can see a stage where I say I should keep quiet. Maybe I'll make an error and they'll find out. Okay, we are reaching that stage now. So perfect, right? Hairi Haiga Haida Loni. Let's play. Uh, oh, I seem to have changed the slide. Hari Kamboji. Vachaspati. Did you hear the difference? He just played the ma, switched to high ma. Right? So now we got that one. Right? Now let's play uh, our favorite. Let's play Shankarabharnam. Shankarabharnam is what address now? You, don't, you should not be even looking there now. Right? You should not even look at the screen. You say, oh, what a silly question he's asking. Huh? Uh huh. Five five. Hairi Haiga. Haida Haini. Let's play Shankara Varnam, sir. M1. M1. Yes, you have heard Dira Shankara Varnam now. Now he is going to switch to M2. Okay, let's switch to M2. Kalyani. Kalyani. So, what is the address of Kalyani? M255. Right? Okay. Now, when you understand this, you see there is a certain symmetry in things. So, let's play. We have done a few of this. But let's play Maya Maula Gaula and uh, Kama Vardini, which is also Pantuvarali. We are going to just switch M1 and M2. Right? So play Maya Malagola and then play Kama Vardini. You heard the switch? The M2 switch? Okay. Now we are going to play Nata Bhairavi and Shanmuga Priya. Nata Bhairavi is M142. What does 42 mean again? Two. Four two. Loni. Okay. Let's play. And now let's switch to M2. So what's the address of Shanmuga Priya? M242. M242. Pratimadhyamam, Hairi Haiga, Loda Loni. Clear? Okay. Same thing. Uh, we did this a little bit, so maybe we should. Uh, we uh, how are we doing on time? We are. I think we are okay on time, right? Okay. So let's just do Hari Kamboji and Vachaspati again. Just the M two difference to illustrate. So Hari Kamboji is five four. Very important. Just below Shankarabharnam, only the knee drops from high knee to low knee. And we have already seen Shankara Paranam and Kalyani, so we won't emphasize that. Now, you saw that pattern, right, which is symmetric across the M1, M2 line. Now, let's see symmetric progression. 
So here we have Todi. So it is, is Todi is M122, right? 22 is low re, low ga. It's also low da, low ni. So you can see what re and ga are doing, da and ni are doing. This is a particularly curious combination and an important combination. Similarly, let us take at Kara, uh, Maya Malagaula. Small re, uh, low re, high ga, low da, high ni. Right? So what re ga are doing, da and ni are doing. Karagara Priya. It is high re, low ga, high da, low ni. Right? Similarly, in Shankarabharnam, it is high ri, high ga, high da, high ni. Right? So these ragas have some special significance because what ri and ga are doing, da and ni are doing. So I started calling them diagonal melakartas and I drew this diagram. So this is ri ga combination, this is da ni combination. So for instance, you take two on this and two on this, you get todi. Right? And you get the corresponding twin across the M1, M2 line, which is uh, Bhava Priya. <coughs> Bhava Priya. So, <coughs> so similar three and three, you get Maya Mola Gaula and Kama Vridhini or Pantuvarali on, uh, on that, right? Same behavior. So you do four, four, you get Karagara Priya and Hemavati. You do five, five, you get uh, Shankara Baranam and Kalyani and so on, right? So I, I started calling, wow, these are, it's interesting, and this line is interesting, and I, I started calling it diagonal melakartas. And once I was visiting my brother in uh, Bangalore, and he showed me a book by Dr. Raja Ramana, right, the uh, atomic physicist. And as you know, as uh, 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 Sri, uh, Srikant mentioned, some of these uh, amazing scientists are also amazing musicians, and he was a very good piano player. And he understood both Western music and uh, you know Indian music. In his book, written you know, in the 1950s or 60s, he calls these ragas diagonal ragas, right? Purely, you know, I was just amazed at the coincidence. So obviously, he saw some pattern that he wanted to call them diagonal. Now, once you have these diagonal ragas, you also find there is a cluster around this diagonal. Right? Because they often seem to have, it's almost like uh, diagonal ragas are the spine of the Carnatic music uh, Melakartha system and there are a variety of adjoining rag ragas which become very important. So for instance, uh, around uh, Todi, you can look at you know, Denuka, around Maya Mola Gaula, you can look at Chakravakam, around Karagara Priya, you can see uh, Kiravani and uh, you know, Nata Bhairavi and so on. Right? So, the, around Chakra Barnam, you can say Hari, uh, no, uh, Hari Kamboji or Gauri Manohari, Vagade Deshwari and so on, Chakra Vakam and all that, right? So similarly, it also is true of uh, clusters or M2, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, Subhavantu Varali, Shanmuga Priya, Hemavati, Ramapriya, Vachaspati, Latangi and so on, right? So. You can see the importance of this and the nice way to think about it is get a grasp on the diagonals. Once you get the diagonals down, so you say Todi is 2-2. Two, two. What is 2-2? Two, two? You have to say it. Lori, Loga, Loda, Loni for M1. So M1, 2-2. Two, two. Clear? What is Maya Mola Gaula? M133. What is 3? Haini, right? What is Karagar Priya? What is the number? What is the address? 44, M144. So, what is the. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, M155. Say to you say loud, you know. They say this is why in uh, uh, in our way of thinking, even the music teacher and even on other things, they say you have to say it loud and you have to say it two times. That's when the voice goes out and comes back in, right? You will hear our own voice reconciling what you say so that it instantiates in your memory. So you have to say it loud. It doesn't matter if you're wrong, but when you say it loud, you will hear it again. So what is M one five five? Perfect, right? 
you get this down you just get the melakarta the diagonal melakarta is right everything else will fall into place right like i told you harikambhoji is one step away from shankarabaranam right what is that step someone says what is harikambhoji you'll say are it's so simple right it is m154 right what is that you know what shankarabaranam is m155 what does m154 mean what are you dropping the knee goes from the high haida haida high knee goes to haida low knee right 54 right so you can once you have a grasp of the diagonal mela kartas in terms of their address you actually know all the swara positions 22334455 once you got that you just have to associate it or oh, no problem if you say 53 i know what it means it is the riga of shankara varnam it is the dani of mela maya mala gola right it is instant it instantly you would know what the swaras are for anything any of the 72 then you you can ask me okay but i read in the book it is number 38 i don't know how what to do with 38 it is not the address that i am familiar with first of all if it is above 36 subtract 36 because it is pratimadhyamam it is a second raga in the pratimadhyamam what is uh, the second raga in the pratimadhyamam right so you now have to just look at it and say okay i can navigate to what that address is right so oops 38 it happens to be jalar varna jalar navam jalar navam but you have played jalar i am just pulling some random number so jalar navam is m212 what is m212 what is one lori hairi lori hairi what is two let's play that number m1 uh, m212 uh, random thing we have picked 38 jalar navam M two one two, Lori Hairi, and then Loda Loda Loni Loda Loni. Hmm. So, nigga, you play uh, Lori Hairi, and then you play uh, Loda uh, Loni. Second one. Yeah, this one. M two section or M one? M two one two. So M2 Lori Hairi, and then Loda Loni. See some ra- ragam I have never heard of, but now we know what the swaras are by a simple understanding of. Okay, I can find this new address. No problem. About thirty thirty six. It is Pratimadhyamam. So it's M2. It is the second one. So in the second one, it is one comma two, right? Clear? Because you remember that's how it it goes. It is, uh, huh? Which is seven? Will come and the second uh, tower. Yes, two one. Yeah, two one. Two one. No, no. This is one two. It. She's asking if it is seven two. Ah, yeah. What is the number? Correct. Two 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 one two, two, one. two, two one. one. Okay. Okay. So clear. Yes. So any raga, you should be able to find an equivalent address, right? Will you be able to do it? Let's try another one. Let us say it's Raga nineteen. I don't know what it is. What is the address of Raga nineteen? Beautiful, absolutely. So now give the swaras. Yeah, you said perfect. It's the fourth chakra actually. That first number, the Riga, the Riga combination is the chakra. Okay, I'm not emphasizing chakras and so on because it's got a, you know, you have to understand the chakra, uh, you know, uh, significance. It turns out it is the chakra, 
it is the fourth chakra, it is a Veda chakra. So now 4 1. What are the swaras of 4 1? Four one we said, huh? Yeah. Okay, what is one? Aloda Haida. Clear? Okay? Now we are going to answer the question that I posed right at the beginning. Not we, you are going to answer. Okay. If you know the answer, I want you to wait. Because I want everyone to have the opportunity to think through this issue. So what did Sri Bharat Sundar say? So he said, start with Maya Malagaula, right? Ma what is M Maya Malagaula's address is what? 3, 3, right? What does 3 and 3 mean? So just say it out loud. What is M133, what does it mean? Okay. Lori, Haiga, Loda, Haini, right? Sir, can you play Maya Malagaula once, please? Beautiful. Now, let's imagine we are all the contestants and Mr. Shri Bharat Sundar is here and he's asking us, fine, now you have done Maya Malagavala, I want you to shift all the things which can be shifted. So what does he want to do us to do with Ri? So it was low Ri, right? Make it high Ri. What was Ga? High Ga. He wants us to make it low Ga. Let's just work on that one. We were at 3. 3 was low Ri? Low Ri high Ga. When you switched it, what did we get? What is the number? Four. Right? Everyone is clear on that? Okay. What happened to da and ni? What is Maya Maula Gaula's da and ni? Low da and ni. Do the Sri Bharat Sundar shift. And what is the number for that? Oh, someone is watching very carefully. So what happened is Maya Mola Gaula became Karagarapriya. But he said one more thing. Yeah, change the what happens when you change the Madhyam? It crosses the M1, M2 line. What, what Raga do you get? Hemavati. M2, 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 under the switch that he asked becomes M244. Will you play both together please? So play... Uh, Maya Mala Gaula playing, going up, Hemavati coming down, which is what he asked. Go up, Arohanam, uh, Maya Mala Gaula. Avarohanam, Hemavati. Hemavati. <laughs> right, everyone is clear about the question and the answer? You have answered a Carnatic music idol question. You may soon be called to the stage. You may have to perform. Who knows what wonders await. Okay? All right. So I'm just going to summarize. Melakarta ragas can be easily understood as a combo number of Riga and Dani along with M1, M2. These combinations are associated with a simple number. For Riga, one is low ri, high ri. For two, it's low ri, low ga. Three, low ri, high ga. Four, high ri, low ga. Five, high ri, high ga. Six, low ga, high ga. Similarly, dani combinations are one, low da, high da. Two, low da, low ni. Three, low da, high ni. Four, high da, low ni. Five, high da, high ni. And six, low ni, high ni. Example, Hari Kamboji is M154, Hairi Haiga, M1, Haida Loni. If practitioners use this numerical mnemonic for Melakarta Raga, they will be able to see the swaras instantaneously. This numerical method provides context to related Melakarta Ragas. Is 
everyone comfortable with what you have discussed? You have you understood? Yes. Okay. Let's small quiz. Melakarta eight is what address? Two two Todi. Melakarta fifteen is what address? Three three. M one perfect. Melakarta twenty two is what address? M one four four. Melakarta uh, twenty nine is what address? Melakarta sixty five is what address? M two five five. All right. Thank you all. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Thank you very much. So I'm happy to answer any questions or feel free to have discussions. So, uh, Mr. Srikant, Mr. Rajagopalan, uh, I'm done with the formal part of it. Yeah, please. Yeah. No, no, anything is okay. Shifting Shruti's. So I'm not con I know a little bit, but I'm not confident enough to answer that question. Uh, so, no, 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 it's no, nothing wrong. But you, uh, I think it's related to the switching that we are talking about. But I, I'm not mentally connected it enough for you, me to answer that question. Hmm? Okay. M1 and M2. Suddha Madhyamam, Prati Madhyamam. Can you play M1 and M2 separately? Just play M1. Just M1. Suddha Madhyamam. Varun Suddha Madhyam Le Amkunga. Don't do anything else. Ma. Now, Prati Madhyamam. Not long and short. It is a... The ma is changing. The frequency is changing. No, it's a different frequency. It's a it's a different frequency. It's like re and ga. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then uh, there's a time factor for that. No, no time factor. It's an oscillatory wave. The freak only the frequency matters. So the frequency is different. No, it's frequency. just like low re, high knee, and all that. It is a low ma, high ma. Yeah, low ma, high ma. Okay. Ah, any other questions? From here, uh, my question to you is: uh, It might be a little bit since you have, you know, gone into depth into Carnatic music, and uh, you've written a book on Bhagavad Gita, and you talked something about Patanjali Yoga Sutras. So, could you enlighten us on how South Indian music or music in Will helps us. How does music help us? On the yoga path. Especially, you brought in Patanjali with the pyramid. See, I, uh, I'll answer at the level that I understand. Okay, So, uh, there are people who understand this much better, obviously. What I found is the connection between Shlokas and yoga, and yoga and pranayama, which I practice every day. To me, it's it feels profound. I don't know whether other people f uh, find it profound. Okay. I think there is an underlying uh, beauty to the way Indian thought systems have developed, and they are layers upon layers of wisdom that has been buried in. So. On shlokas, as I alluded to earlier on, if we think about an architecture for a shloka and why they used a standard meter, I think they said, here's a way for you to breathe properly every day. Chances are most of us can remember only a few shlokas, right? We might remember, you know, a couple 
verses of the Bhagavad Gita or some uh, something for Vakratunda or something like that. I imagine, in my own way of thinking about this, that they did it deliberately so that the one or two shlokas that you know, you can be running in your head constantly. But you use that to breathe. Right? So I postulated in the Art of Breathing book, I say, you have to breathe through a count of eight. That is the shloka meter. Same as Anushtha Chandaha, same as uh, Adi Thalam and so on. You have, to, you have to breathe in to a count of eight and you have to breathe out to a count of eight. And within that, there is a certain emphasis that you give. So on the breathing cycle, I say, you breathe, uh, I created a, uh, an English shloka. And I say this is not a secular issue. I, I mean, it's a secular issue, it's not a religious issue. But you can use religious shlokas if you want, if that's your preference. But I created an English shloka. I said, breathe in softly, breathe in strong. Right? To, for a count of eight. So just practice that. I want you to breathe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? And imagine, breathe in gently, breathe in strong. Okay? Just let's do that. I'll say, I'll say the, please don't say the words because then your breathing will get interrupted. So just say, breathe in gently, breathe in strong. Until I, I say it, you stay there. Okay? Breathe in gently, breathe in strong. Okay? At that point, your chest muscles should have expanded, which we normally don't do. When the chest muscles expand, your, your lung expands. Okay? The lung actually has no inherent power. It is only a balloon. It expands or contracts depending on other things, the abdomen or the chest allowing it to either expand or contract. So you have now breathed in, right? I'm going to now finish that off. Breathe out gently and force air out, right? I want you to just follow that. So breathe in gently, breathe in strong, breathe out gently and force air out. When you do force air out, you do it with your abdomen. Because the abdomen muscles are the ones who will push the carbon dioxide out. It will contract the lungs and push air out. Now, the same thing is, I'm going to say a shloka, I want you to do the same thing. Okay? I'm going to do Vakratunda Mahakaya, that's count of eight. Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Sama Prabha Count of eight again, right? So when I say Vakratunda Mahakaya, you should have finished breathing. Breathing, taking in. When I say Surya Koti Sama Prabha, you should have finished pushing air out. Okay, ready? Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Sama Prabha Nirvignam Kurmedeya Sarvakareshu Sarvada can you see that simple sloka, you put it in your mind, you can be walking, you can be watching a cricket match, you can be reading a book, you can still practice that same breathing method. So I've done this for the last several years now. I find it enormously significant because my breathing has changed. I can slow down my breathing, I can say it more gently, I can say Vakratunda Mahakaya. I can slow it down, right? I can do it while running. So I imagine, I don't know whether it's true or not, but it does not matter. My point is, the practice of it will make you feel better, will force you to breathe better. Your lung power will expand, you'll, you'll take in more oxygen, oxygen, and you'll find that the body gradually actually breathes to a count of eight, rather than most, if you just measure yourself casually, you're not, you're doing something else, suddenly said, oh, that Sridhar fellow said something, and you find you're actually counting, breathing to a count of four. Most of us breathe one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. We breathe extraordinarily shallow. Whereas you see dogs lying there, they'll go, <laughs> they know how to breathe better than us. Anyhow, it's just a theory, but I have found it to be impactful. I hope that answers your question. According by this, it makes sense to say the shloka in our mind, Rather than oh, you should not enunciate. If you enunciate, the air will come out of here. That doesn't work. You should just let it run here. As far as <coughs> it's a type of pranayama which is so simple. Right? Rather than pranayama which you do in front of uh, YouTube and do... <laughs> right, right. So, it's not that there's something wrong with it, but... You have to do something which strains your body for 25,000 times of breathing, 
rather than I did I do pranayama of, you know every day for 20 minutes you're extending this bit across ramayana and uh, any shloka is like that yeah yeah it's just amazing across. yeah it's just amazing yeah. how much anushtup chanda or shloka meter has been used in, in uh, indian you know uh, works Are your books available in India? Yeah, they are available. I just check on Amazon and uh, you'll find that uh, uh, the book is available either on Kindle, maybe on paperback, right? It should be available. By the way, I forgot to do the last slide. That's a thank you slide. Thank you all for coming. But please note my uh, the email, karnatikmelakartaragas at gmail.com. karnatikmelakartaragas at gmail.com. You can write to that. I am happy to send this presentation. Yeah. Karnatik Melakarta Ragas at gmail.com. Uh, I'll send this presentation. I understand that uh, Karthik Fine Arts will also put this on you the, the talk on YouTube. Right. Okay. Finally, it uh, remains for me to thank Sri Muthuswami for his wonderful uh, accompaniment. He's been very gracious and uh, he has taught us how to appreciate uh, uh, the Melakartas. I would like to thank Karnatic Fine Arts, Sri Rajagopalan, the many members of the Karthik Fine Arts, and of course my good friend Srikanth, without whom this would not have happened. He said, Sridhar, you are saying some of these things, I don't know whether it is uh, useful or not, but why don't you come and you know, make a fool of yourself? So, uh, <laughs> and so thanks to him for... This one. Oh, I have not. This is the first time I presented this. All right. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Uh, much appreciated for being a good audience. On behalf of Karthik Fine Arts, I would like to thank Dr. Sridhar Jagannathan, Vidwan, Mr. Matuswami, and the entire fantastic audience. We, the entire session was really uh, interactive as uh, Mr. Sridhar was expecting. And um, so to say, in fact, the audience also, uh, uh, very good and um, uh, interaction was excellent, to be more precise. I would like to say like that. And then I would like to thank all the audience also, as also uh, Dr. Sridhar Jagannathan, Mr. Uh, Puthu Swami, and um, everybody for that matter. Thank you very much. Good night. Uh, Mr. Ramaswamy, uh, director of uh, Bharti Vidya Bhavan also is present now. We particularly thank Mr. Ramaswamy also. <laughs> <laughs>